Sorry, buddy. Looks like you're going to have to keep on hoping for another five years. He stay. Austin Matthews has signed a contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs, $13.25 million a season for another four years. I know a lot of people have already given their opinions on this deal. You know, some really like it, others not so much. I'm going to give you guys my opinion on this video and we'll take a look at, you know, how this contract is going to affect the Maple Leafs in the future. You know, if this is going to hurt the Maple Leafs, if it's like, okay, all of that good stuff. Before we get into it though, if you guys are new to the channel and you like hockey content, please make sure to subscribe I'd really appreciate it all right so is this a good deal for the Leafs well Austin Matthews is going to be on your team for another five seasons and it is five seasons because he still has one year left in his current deal and then of course the four extra but yeah Austin Matthews being on your team he is the best player currently on the Maple Leafs and honestly in my opinion he is the best player in Maple Leafs history I really do believe that he is an absolutely phenomenal player and you had to keep him you had had to keep him the Leafs had to get this done like there's no way you can let Austin Matthews go for free that would be an absolute disaster and they also kind of needed to get it done before the season started as well just for everybody's sake like literally all of Lee fans if Austin Matthews was not signed going into the season it would be just such a headache for Lee fans for like the people in the media for everybody else as well because that's all that would be talked about every single day every single like game pretty much it would just be when is Austin Matthews gonna sign how much is he gonna sign is he gonna walk it would just be so annoying no one will like it so I'm very very happy that he has signed it is a very good thing now is the contract good though because four years isn't really that long especially when you look at other people's you know other big players contracts like a McDavid or a McKinnon for example they both of course signed eight years Austin Matthews only four so is it okay that Matthews has only signed for four years I'll be honest, I'm not overly happy about it. I would like, obviously, a longer contract, especially with a guy like Austin Matthews. When it is your big players, your star players, I want those to go basically as long as you can, at least until, like, they get into, like, their late 30s. I don't really want them, you know, being extended eight years when they're 35 or anything like that. But, you know, when Austin Matthews is going to be extended until, I think it's 31 that this contract brings him to. So, obviously, with the four extra years there, it would bring him to 35. I think I would be a lot more happy with that, you know, at that point. I I think that's just a little bit better. That being said, though, four years is still quite a long time. Like, that's still five years out, including this current year's contract. So I'm not over the moon about the length of this contract, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world either. I think it's probably going to end up being fine. I'm not going to be afraid that he's going to go to Arizona in another five years. I really hope that people don't continue talking about that. I know I kind of had that little bit at the start, but I really hope that people aren't just going to continuously say, well, now Matthews is going to go to Arizona in five years instead of, you know, in two years or whatever it may be. I hope that's not the case. It's probably going to happen, though. It's probably going to be annoying. I always kind of found it annoying, but I'm glad that he signed now, so at least it can, you know, postpone that a little bit. Now, with the actual cap hit of the contract, the 13.25, when I first saw that, I was a little bit iffy about it. I obviously knew that it was probably going to be in around that range, but I still wasn't overly excited about it. It makes him the highest played player in the league. I had a hard time saying that. The highest paid player in the league is now Austin Matthews at that 13.25. Well, he will be, I should say, when that kicks in after next season but realistically taking a look at a couple of things I don't think it's that big of a surprise that he got this much and honestly I don't think it's that big of a deal either like his current contract the one that he's on right now he's making 11.64 million dollars a season the new one 13.25 so he only got a 1.61 million dollar raise that's not that crazy I feel like that is you know honestly pretty low all things considered like with Austin Matthews having the 60 goal season and everything like that I feel like it is kind of a low number it's not that big of a raise and I do think that cap hit percentage is pretty important in this conversation here because of course a lot of people are saying Austin Matthews shouldn't be the highest paid player in the league he's not that good blah 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 you know whatever it may be I get that I understand that and I honestly you know believe that as well I don't think Austin Matthews should be the highest paid player in the league it probably should be Connor McDavid because he is the best player in the league McDavid David is better than Austin Matthews. I don't think too many people are really going to argue that. You know, the people I feel like that do argue, you know, Matthews is better than McDavid are just trolling. I feel like those people are just trolling. I don't really take them too seriously, honestly. But, you know, with those cap hit percentages, though, McDavid, if he signed today, would be making more than Austin Matthews. Like, if you take a look at the cap hit percentage, I got these from Cap Friendly, by the way. Austin Matthews' contract is going to be 15.87% uh, of the cap. Nathan McKinnon, by the way, 15.27, so he's a little bit higher than McKinnon. And McDavid, 16.67. So McDavid is still above Austin Matthews in terms of cap hit percentage when he signed that contract. And that makes sense. That's how it should be. If McDavid signed a contract right now, he definitely would be making more than Matthews. That's not really too much of a question. 
question, unless he decided to take a huge team discount, which is something that you can bring up with the Leafs. They don't really take team discounts. That's just not really their thing. I've seen some people try and argue that this is a team discount. I disagree with that. I don't think that is the case. Unless it was like $12 million a year, maybe I could argue it then, or if it was more than four years, you know, one of those two, I can maybe argue that it is team friendly, but 13.25 at four years, I don't think that is team friendly, but I also don't really see that being, you know, Austin Matthews being super greedy or anything like that. Like, yes, obviously he does want a lot of money. That is completely fair. I don't really blame him for that, but I don't really think that is like a huge greed thing or anything like that. Like, I feel like that is fair value for Austin Matthews. I really do believe that. Like, he is probably the best goal scorer in the league right now. I say probably just to give a little bit of leeway to some people, even though Matthews usually does come out on top of, you know, all of the statistics and everything like that over the past couple of seasons in terms of goal scoring. Some people might argue Ovechkin, and if you want to say that, go for it, fine, but I still think that Austin Matthews is the best goal scorer in the league currently, and I feel like his defense is kind of underrated still. I don't really see it talked about that much, at least outside of Leaf fandom. I think a lot of Leaf fans know how good he is defensively on the back check, stick lifting, all of that good stuff, but, you know, outside of Leaf fans, I feel like people don't really talk about it too much, or at least underrate it, and whether that is just because they are Leaf haters, they don't like the Leafs, all of that, you know, I think that is definitely a possibility, and I feel like that, you know, affects a lot of people's opinions as well, because they hate the Leafs, they hate people talking about the Leafs, and I get that, it makes sense, sometimes I hate how much people talk about the Leafs too, honestly, I really, really do, because sometimes when they're playing terrible, I'm like, please just stop talking about them, I don't want to see them right now, they're pissing me off, stop it, <laughs> But yeah, that Austin Matthews guy, he's pretty good. I feel like a lot of people know that. So with this deal here, I would say that it's fair value. I don't think it's a huge deal for the Maple Leafs. I don't think they got absolutely ripped off and they, you know, it's a terrible contract or anything like that. I feel like it's fair for both sides. And honestly, it, I'm happy with it. I really, really am because Austin Matthews is playing on my hockey team for another five years at least. And that is a good thing. He is a very good player. So I'm very excited about it. So I am happy with this deal. I'm glad that he signed it. That is for sure that I don't have to stress about it any longer. I'm very, very excited about that. Now, how is this going to affect the rest of the roster? That is where it can be a little bit worrisome because it is a very big contract. Even though I think it's a fair deal, it's still massive, of course, at least in terms of the NHL. So with the cap hit going up, though, that should help alleviate it a little bit, but we'll see how much the cap actually does go up. I'm not going to, you know, hold my breath or anything like that because the cap was supposed to go up a couple of years ago and then, you know, all of that stuff, you know, pandemic and everything happened. So We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see how much the cap actually does go up. But with the cap going up, that should help at least a little bit. That being said, though, they're still kind of negotiating Nylander's contract. And I'm worried about that one because there's been speculation that Nylander is going to land in like the $10 million range. I hope that's not the case. And I... I just, I still don't think the core four works. I just really don't at this point. They've tried it too many times. I don't think the core four is a thing that's going to happen. I don't think it's just going to work with the Maple Leafs. There's just too much money in these four guys. And so with them re-signing Matthews and probably re-signing Nylander, or at least it looks like they want to re-sign Nylander, I'm very, very skeptical about it. Even though, I, like, it's not like I hate any of these core four players. Like, I don't hate Matthews, Tavares, Nylander, or Marner. I really don't. Even though I've had my complaints and maybe, you know, I've been angry at Marner or Tavares or, you know, Matthews or Nylander, whatever it may be. Even if I am angry at them, I still do like them as players. I still think they're very good players. I just don't know if all four of them work on this team. I just don't think it does. They've tried it too many times at this point, and it hasn't worked. It's only worked once to get them out of one round, and then they won one game, and that's it. And they didn't look very good in that series either, so... I don't know, like, I'm just kind of worried about the future of this team, especially if they re-sign Nylander at that $10 million range. I really hope they don't do that, because even though I love Nylander, he is my favorite out of those four players, and probably my favorite on the Leafs as well. That's a lot for Nylander. He's, he's a very good offensive player, defensively. Not so much. He's got some issues there. He's, you know, he's got to work on that a little bit. So I don't think he's quite a $10 million player. So I really hope they don't give him that much. I really hope that they find a way to bring that down at least a little bit. And I know it always comes back to the core four when you're talking about the Maple Leafs, but there is a reason for that because with those guys making so much money, the rest of the roster really does hurt a little bit because when those guys are shut down during the playoffs, whether it's because they're not playing well or just because, you know, defensively, the other team is really just smothering them, whatever it may be, let's just say the other team is shutting them down. The rest of the roster just has a really hard time picking up the slack there. And yeah, that's kind of just what's going to happen when you have so much money tied up in those guys. So I'm, 
I'm nervous. I, I am very, very nervous. That is for sure. I'm hopeful that with like Domi coming in and Bertuzzi and Klingberg as well, all of that kind of offense, maybe that's going to help the Leafs kind of, you know, get over the hump at least. Although I guess they kind of technically already did, but it didn't really feel like it. But yeah, anyways, maybe that'll help them kind of get further in the playoffs with all of that scoring. I know they maybe took a little bit of a step back with their defense, but honestly, I really don't feel like their defense has been that horrible in previous series. You know, the series against Florida, I will say, wasn't that great. I don't think McCabe or Brody really had a fantastic series. But, you know, with Brody, that was kind of an outlier. He's been, you know, pretty much fantastic since he's been on the Leafs. So that was a very strange kind of series for TJ Brody. With McCabe, you know, he was still kind of maybe getting a little bit used to the Maple Leafs. So hopefully having a full season behind him is going to help him out a little bit more. But I guess we'll have to wait and see how the season plays out. Overall, though, I am positive on this deal. I am very, very happy. Austin Matthews is a Leaf and he's going to be a Leaf for another five seasons. I just have a hard time really seeing a huge negative thing about this. Yes, it is only four seasons, but team signed best player. Good. Like, that's just how I kind of feel about it. Honestly, that, that's basically my summary of this video is team sign best player. Good. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your guys' opinions in the comments down below. Are you a Belief fan or are you another fan? I'd love to know all of your opinions. Make sure to follow me on my other social medias. Stuff will be in the description down below. Like I said, though, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.